Okay, so in a division equation, there are three different parts, and it's important for us to know what each of these parts are and what they mean, and so that we can really know what we're trying to figure out. This is gonna be especially important when we start doing division word problems, and we have to really figure out what they're asking us to do. So I have written the division both ways, um, but you might see it. After today, you're probably not gonna see division written like this. It's going to be written like this from now on. Um, but a division problem we know has three different pieces, and each of these pieces has a name. So if these equations represent the division sentence 20 divided by 5 equals 4, 20 is what we call the dividend. The dividend, it's the total number that's being divided into equal groups. So in 20 divided by 5 equals 4, our dividend is 20. 20 is what we're dividing up into equal groups. It's going to be your bigger number. Now, divided by 5, we see that both places. 5 is called our divisor. That's how many equal parts the dividend is to be divided into. How many? So 20 divided by 5, I know if, if we're talking about stuffed animals, and I have 20 stuffed animals, and I'm dividing them by 5, I'm dividing them to 5 groups. So five is the number of equal parts. 20 stuffed animals divided by five, so that's the five equal groups. Your divisor, how many it's being divided into. The quotient is how big each equal part is. So if I have 20 stuffed animals, I'm dividing them into five groups. My quotient, that means how big is each equal part? Each equal part's gonna have four stuffed animals. So we know dividends are biggest, divided into the divisor, how many equal groups. Your quotient, that's always gonna be your answer. How many are in each equal group? So, you're gonna have several problems like this. 63 divided by seven equals nine, and it's gonna want you to identify which one's the dividend, which one's the divisor, which one's the quotient. Our dividend is always our biggest number. So if it's 63 divided by seven equals nine, our dividend would be 63. That's the total number of pieces I have. My divisor, how many equal parts am I dividing it into? How many groups are there? I'm dividing it into seven groups, so seven is my divisor. My quotient is how many are in each group. There are nine in each group, so that's the quotient. What I would suggest doing on the next ones, we've got some riddles, I would always set it up. If you're being asked to identify quotient, dividend, and divisor, I would set up your problems like this. So we have, if the quotient is five, so remember we have dividend, divisor, quotient. If the quotient is five and the divisor is eight, what's the dividend? Hmm, what divided by eight equals five? Or remember we know what the division is the inverse of multiplication. So I could do five times eight equals what? Because our, divide, our dividend is the biggest number. We know five times eight is 40. So the dividend would be 40. On another one, remember we have dividend divided by divisor equals the quotient. If the dividend is 72 and the quotient is 9, what's the divisor? 72 divided by what equals 9? Well, think about multiplication. That's your inverse. 9 times what equals 72? We know that's 9 times 8. So your divisor would be 8. 72 divided by 8 equals 9. So for your lesson today, you're going to have to identify the dividend divisor and quotient, and then you're going to have to answer some of these riddles. What I would do is I would write them down like this. Write down the parts you know and find that missing piece. 